So without any more ado, we're going to get started. Our first poet tonight is Bill Yarrow. I'm just going to sit back. Hi everybody, thanks all everybody for coming out. It's, uh, it's a great project and I'm happy to be uh, part of it. Um, when I heard about this from uh, Bill, I did write some poems specifically for this chapbook, but I looked through some of my other work and saw that there were some things that I thought could fit in with the chapbook, and so I didn't uh, write every poem uh, uh, specifically for, uh, for this. Um, before I read from, uh, from my chapbook, which is called We All Saw It Coming, I just want to just talk a little bit about political uh, poetry. So not every uh, political poem is a protest poem. There's a, a long tradition of uh, poets writing occasional poems, uh, poems written in honor or commemoration of uh, some event or, or occasion. And those poems are uh, predictably just crap. Uh, <laughs> it's terrible. Um, and the poets who write such poems are usually uh, some kind of agents or dupes of the state. Um, and then there are these other poems that are written specifically for events or occurrences, uh, response to or reaction to uh, something that's uh, going on in the world. And the, most of the explicitly political poems are of uh, this type. Um, many of these poets are angry, uh, justifiably angry, uh, full of revolutionary fervor and uh, what Yeats called passionate intensity. Um, but there are a lot of other poems that are political, just not explicitly political for uh, a, a certain uh, cause, um, because they're just about life. And they're just about people, and people are by nature political. And no matter what we do, we can't help uh, having politics come into our lives. And in that way, it also comes into our poetry. So I'm going to read some poems uh, in, that, uh, in that vein. This first one was written in 2010, and it's called semi Theresius. I knew my mother would die by the weekend when she declined to answer my questions about her parents or her youth. I knew my uncle would die a pauper when he grew obsessed with drafting a will. I knew my grandmother was becoming senile when she lost her appetite for playing cards. I knew my father was irreversibly old when he crashed into a mail truck trying to turn into our drive. And I knew America would be a colony again when it forsook consensus or impasse. This is, I'll speak a prophecy, then I'll go, it's, uh, that, that's a line from The Fool in the play. When iodine coffee is promoted by surgeons, when arsonists masquerade as first responders, when phantasmagoric nuns mock the lisp of addicts, when internet criminals arouse the spleen of gamblers, when the library asylum is redistricted by radio politics, when right-wing professionals call on extortionists for food, when rooftop pool is overrun by media beetles, when evangelical bobcats weaponize the electorate, when legal satans unhook Christ's suspenders, then shall the whorish company bow down to trumpery. Um, and this one is called Behave Yourself. I won't do that again. Sure you will. You can't help it. You can try to control yourself, but you will fail because you can't help but be true to who you truly are. Your behavior is yourself. We are the deeds creature, said Middleton, and he was right. Behavior is fixed at 10 years old. After that, it's all behavior mod. That is to say, tweaking by ambition, humiliation, punishment, fear, or gold of one kind or another. Put away the towel. Fish are slippery. The end. We are invariably ourselves. Repeated behavior, that's just redundancy. All behavior is serial behavior. And this is called the rising tide. The new world is filled with old people with good posture and a disdain for odd postures. I'm just a rental dog myself, looking for the guardian of starlight, peeing on the expiring parking meters and barking up all the wrong trees. A decade ago, I was new myself. They put me in a factory next to Six Fingered Marie and gave me tea biscuits and sugar water at four hour intervals. My hands crumpled from the ironwork and only a jug handle yoga pose could unbend me. 
and so it will be with my soulless effigy as proleptic ratiocination seeps into itself and disappears, as the polished ego dips directly into dullness, as Ivan Karamazov deliquesces, as Imlac loses his footing, as Lear begins to stink, as Pangloss rises again. Um, and uh, sometimes people act in a way that uh, is in opposition to their best uh, interests. Uh, it's hard to understand uh, why someone would do that, why you might vote in a certain way or keep supporting uh, someone whose uh, policies uh, clearly are uh, disenfranchising you or, uh, or worse. So this is a poem about that. It's called Just the Facts. Skin cancer walks along Zuma Beach at noon. Lung cancer goes down to the City of Hope lobby to smoke. Bile duct cancer bellies up to Gill's Buffet. Bone cancer rides through Runyon Canyon on a gravity bike. At the hint of a cure, a thin crowd collects on Figueroa Street. Um, this is my explicitly uh, political poem. This is called We All Saw It Coming. And I wrote this in a moment of profound despair that I think we all experienced at least once uh, in the last uh, five or six months or more. We all saw it coming. We all saw it coming. The snakes in ascendance, the dark satanic milling around, the troops of the nouveau greedy, the safety nets on fire, the cesspool of superiority flooding the brazen stage. We all saw it coming. The Pete Moss racists, the neonatal Nazis, King Lear, Queen Gertrude, the bully trident planted, the ratcheting down of sense. We all saw it coming. The tide of crude insurgents, complacently, complacency swept away, virtue's camel toe exposed, the nipple slip of decency, the gangbang of the plebiscite, the fondling of the tit of turpitude. <laughs> We all saw it coming. I don't mean we. I don't mean we saw it coming. I mean I. I saw it coming and did nothing. And this one is called Go Unlovely Trump. And it's after the <laughs> Waller poem, Go Lovely Rose. Go unlovely Trump. Tell the horse faced Putin. You will play his rump and bow to his delirium with expectations of asylum. Go on, lovely Trump, dupe of exploitation, cesspool, human dump. Bid farewell to the Earth nation, for your treasons are unwelcome. Small is the worth of bluster from facts retired. I bid you go forth and suffer undesired, and not blush ever, you, the unadmired. Mm. I'm going to end with this one, uh, which is called Ways of Seeing Corruption. And it's based on the picture on the cover. Uh, and um, so you'll uh, understand as I, uh, as I read the poem. I have become interested in Karachi, Ludovico Karachi, Bolognese contemporary of Shakespeare, early Baroque artist, cousin of Agostino and Annabale, whose 1612 painting, Body of St. Sebastian, thrown into the Cloaca Maxima, is a masterpiece of the frozen moment. Sebastian is limp in a sheet, supported by muscular soldiers. His hands hang down, his eyes are shut. Is he asleep? More likely unconscious. After all, he is about to be thrown into the great sewer of Rome. Unless one rotates the image. Then he becomes beautifully vertical, his dreaming body like a sleeping bird floating in warm, soft air. Then the closed fists and flexed forearms of his executioners are seen impotently attempting to hold him down, but nothing human can prevent his rise. I hope we can rotate our current <laughs> understanding of the world and uh, get to a more uh, a uh, place, place filled with uh, possibility and hope and uh, uh, life. Um, thank you, everybody. <laughs>